Still one minute is left. Zero so minutes are left. Right, right, right. Somebody is joining. Uh, should I admit? Uh, I think we have kept it open, sir. No need of any admit. Uh, they, they can join on their okay. own. Okay. Okay. I've just kept just let me check it out. I have kept that enable version so people can join on their own. Can I now start screen share? Ah, uh, yeah, yes, sir. Just a minute. Uh, she'll just introduce herself, and then we okay. can start the uh, this thing screen share. Okay, okay. She'll introduce, and then. We... So we are live now on YouTube. Uh, Prerna, you can start the session. Sir, you can stop the screen share right now. Should I stop? Yeah, yeah. I will tell you to the screen share. Okay, I stopped. Okay, sir. Great. Prerna? We'll sit up. We'll sit a start. Just join in two minutes, sir. Uh, the uh, speaker has just. Uh... Sir, am I audible? Yes, yes. So, shall start. we start? Coming together is a beginning, keeping together is a progress, and working together is a success. Hello, everyone. A very warm good evening to you all. A warm word of welcome to all the dignitaries, our guest speaker, and all the participants attending this national webinar on Zoom meeting and YouTube Live. Before we proceed, I request all the participants to kindly mute yourself so that we can proceed with the program without any trouble. And if there are any technical glitches, kindly do excuse us. I, Ms. Vilsita Snehal D'Souza, your host for today's evening, would like to welcome you all on behalf of Aloka Foundation family to this national webinar on COVID-19 in the light of Ayurveda by Dr. Chandrasekhar R. Aloka Foundation is a non-profit organization which has been started with the simple vision of serving the people in need and aims to put the best efforts towards all sorts of humanitarian work. Before I introduce you all to the keynote speaker of today's evening, I would like to extend a warm welcome to the main pillars of Aloka Foundation. Mr. Pramod Bhaskar Kumar, President, Aloka Foundation, Dr. Manohar Nayak, Secretary, Aloka Foundation, Dr. Kantini Pramod Kumar, Treasurer, Aloka Foundation, Founder Members, Trustees, and all the participants. 
a hearty welcome to you all. Today, we have with us an eminent personality, Dr. Chandrasekhar R. as our guest of honor, who will be addressing us today. It's my pleasure and honor to extend a hearty welcome to you, sir. Now, I Thank call you. upon guys to give a short introduction of our keynote speaker who will be addressing us today over to you disha thank you vilsita uh, i take this privilege to introduce uh, our today's keynote speaker dr chandrashekar r uh, who will be taking webinar on covid 19 in the light of ayurveda which is organized by aloka foundation mangalore a teacher affects eternity he can never tell where his influence stops. In addition, he is a research professional and a great pioneer and the pilot speaker of our webinar to speak on COVID-19 in the light of Ayurveda. He's our esteemed keynote speaker, Dr. Chandrasekhar R. He is a teaching faculty researcher and an assistant clinical research coordinator in the Department of Pharmacology at AJ Institute of Medical Science and Research Center, Mangalore. He has also won an award as a best outgoing postgraduate in pharmacology from Kasturba Medical College at Manipur <laughs> University on 20th March, 2009. He has also completed his PhD studies in medical pharmacology from Yanapoya University, Mangalore. He has worked as a teaching faculty for undergraduate in pharmacology for MBBS, BDS, as well as allied health science students in Father Muller Medical College and Yanapoya University, Mangalore. His other designations are, he's a member of scientific committee and AJ Research Center in Department of Pharmacology at AJ Institute of Medical Science and Research Center, Mangalore. He's also a biological scientist. He's a member of Institutional Animal Ethical Committee in Department of Pharmacology at AJ Institute of Medical Science and Research Center, Mangalore. He's also an editor in chief in International Journal of Comprehensive and Advanced Pharmacology under IP Innovative Publication Private Limited. He's also a member of Innovative Education and Scientific Research Foundation under IP Innovative Publication Private Limited. He's also serving as a reviewer and the member of editorial board for many national and international journals. He has more than 75 publications in national and international journals, which includes research and review articles as first, corresponding and co-author in index journals with high impact for related to neuropharmacology and ethnopharmacology. Currently, he has now authored for 15 books for medical and paramedical students. A warm welcome to you, sir. As Thank a guest you. hold this speech on COVID-19 in the light of Ayurveda, here I request you to be with open minds to present your queries in a Zoom chat or in a YouTube comment section and boost this webinar reality. So now we are all longing to listen to Dr. Chandrasekhar R. Sir. Over to you. Thank you. I am just going for screen share. If the screen is visible? Yes, sir. Yeah. Okay, fine. We'll start. Yes, sir. Good evening. Uh, you know, from past six to eight months, uh, it's a very hot topic. That is coronavirus or COVID-19, which has shattered the whole world. So from past six to eight months, I have been observing uh, uh, the, all the developments around the world. And uh, I was uh, just waiting for an option to just give my uh, thoughts about this uh, COVID-19 and especially under the light of uh, Ayurveda. 
So uh, welcome for uh, this webinar uh, conducted by this Aloka Foundation. I'm happy to be a part of this. So we will uh, directly go into the topic about this. What is this uh, COVID-19? Uh, so such a hot topic which has shattered the whole world. And uh, you know uh, it has affected each and everybody in one or the other way. That is for sure, whether economically, psychologically, or in terms of any other matter, it has affected one or the other in, uh, in their life. So we'll directly go into the research. Now, see, people uh, mostly talk about acidity. Now, you know what is the real factor of acidity? It is not only caused by diet errors, but more dominated because of stress. These are the research. And uh, people will tell the hypertension is because of the too much of uh, consumption of fatty foods and salt foods. But it is not only that. It is also because of error in managing the emotions. And high cholesterol, not only because of having fatty foods, it is because of excessive laziness and sedentary lifestyle without any exercise, right? Asthma is not because of a disruption of oxygen to the lungs or bronchoconstriction. It's also because of the sad feeling, you know, where you will not get that sympathetic stimulation. So there's, there, there may be a bronchodilation if there is sympathetic stimulation. Because of the sad feeling, you will have parasympathetic stimulation. So that is an exaggeration for the asthma. In case of a diabetes, see, uh, the research tells it not only because of consumption of too much of sugar or uh, you know, glucose content or because of genetic factor. It's also because of fail to manage the emotions like you know selfishness stubborn attitude you now all this cause for stress stress what it does it releases the corticosteroids stress hormones isn't it? so corticosteroids is hyperglycemic so it adds on to the diabetic and kidney stones it's not because of you know the wrongly handled by the kidney for this calcium oxalate and all it is also pent up upon the emotions and hatredness these this are all the you know, research they have done that these are the contributive factors for a disease, not only just the physical ailments, the mental ailments. So whenever you go near the traffic, what you see? You see this signal. The signal you have red for stop, everybody know, yellow to proceed, and green go. So whenever you go from today, you stop near the signal light, just remember what you can adopt that concept in the life reduce or stop as much as meat or meat products in your life. Always proceed with these products, which is very good for the body. And go for green. Right? So this word is very, very simplicity in life. And you know the benefit of exercise. You can see on the left side a fat woman with a we are given a reddish color there. That is it indicates disease. If she does exercise, how the body shape changes, and you can see on the extreme right side, the green color, the shape of the body. And you can see just below the toe, health. So from disease, you move towards health if you do exercise. So come out of the sedentary lifestyle. But if I tell a people or somebody, uh, as, as being I'm a doctor, if I tell a patient, do at least one hour, treadmill per day. If I tell, nowadays what people will do? Do you know? Want to see? The doctor asked me to spend one hour per day on treadmill. So he is nicely sleeping. Is this the exercise? No. You should have that willpower to do the exercise. So you can see here in ancient history, in Ayurveda, Ayurveda is one of the Vedas. So they told Swastasya Swastya Rakshanam to maintain health of a healthy person. It adds years to life and lives to years. Atura Vikara Prashan Mascha means Atura means if any diseased person is there, you should cure the disease. So maintain health of a healthy person and cure disease in the diseased person. So always you see the first sentence, they're telling indirectly prevention is better than cure. That's what the Ayurveda told 5,000 years back. If you care for your stomach, minimize cold food and reduce excess spicy foods. If you care for your kidney, drink enough or sufficient water in daytime, especially in summer and less in winter. Nowadays there will be contraction, so less in winter. Drink less water in night also before sleep. You know, it will not uh, disturb your sleep if you drink a little less water in night time because you are not going to do any activities. 
and reduce the salt intake. Salt is needed for the body, but not too much. Okay, so because that is going to put load on the kidney. This is all the you know ancient uh, uh, scriptures what we got the information. If you care for your throat, use pepper frequently. In our they are telling you use lots of pepper. You know how is going to clear the throat. It's also having a mucolytic and mucokinetic action. It have a mucociliary clearance. That's why you have to use pepper frequently. That's why we have in our Indian uh, uh, culture or system. What do we most of the you know whatever we do curry and all we we use pepper frequently for the natural immunity. If you care for your brain, sleep for eight hours. Very very important. Around 20 hours, 8 hours, minimum 7 and maximum 8 hours sleep is necessary for a healthy life. If you care for your intestine, replace junk foods with vegetables. This is one of the important things. What I told you, go for green, I told you, na, very, very important. You should go for vegetables, especially green leafy vegetables are very, very important. If you care for your ears, pour garlic mixed oil in ear frequently or you can, you can use coconut or sesame oil for the you know, cleansing of the ear. These are all the Ayurvedic principles, what I have been told. Uh, uh, in the ancient text, if you care for your eyes, instill rose water twice a week or cover it with a wet cloth for three minutes. Because nowadays, you know, everywhere we are telling online, online, online. Always we are seeing this screen, computer, laptop, or we are seeing mobile or television. So we get eye strain. So we have to at least keep a wet cloth for three minutes per day. That, is, that will give you some soothing effect to the eyes. If you care for your nose, eat mint regularly. That is, mint is nothing but what is that? Pudina, what we tell, isn't it? So it increases the sense of smell, sense of organ. So if you care for your heart, avoid excess salt. You know, the excess salt is also bad for kidney and heart. So that's what, because it is going to increase the blood pressure. If you care for your liver, avoid excess fatty foods, you know, almost most of the fatty acid oxidation occurs where? In the liver. That's why you are going to give extra stress for the liver. So avoid excess fatty foods. So Let's come out with a simple observation. While eating, try to chew whatever food we have in the mouth as much as possible and swallow slowly. Nowadays, we don't have the patience. No, we have we are in a hurry, but we have to go for a job and just put stuff to idli inside and just simply run away. So that's what we are doing wrong. We are not chewing it properly so that the enzymes cannot really penetrate the food stuff and digest. That's why people are suffering from indigestion. Actually, the occurrence of first burp, you get a burp or belching indicates the upper part of the stomach has emptied the space and occupied the lower part. And just you can uh, little can be added if needed, you can have a little bit. So I'll show you a diagram later. And when you get the second burp of belching, it indicates the stomach is half filled, and at that time you should stop eating. And water can be consumed a few sips in between or at the end also as per requirement, just to enough to fill one fourth of the stomach and rest to be left free. We'll show you a picture. See, this is the first, first few morsel of the food when you take, it fills the fundus and upper one fourth of the stomach. Okay, then you get a burping. When you get burping means the food comes to lower part, near the pylos it comes, isn't it? Now the upper part of the stomach is empty. Now what happens, you can just fill with little water, okay. Now it is coming to half, okay. Or you can have a little bit more also food, and but but its upper part of the stomach should be left empty so that the air can move there, you know. So because of this upper part of the part you have a uh, the stomach, I have air, then water, and the food. Now the proper mixing takes place whenever this peristalsis occurs in the stomach, and it enables the enzymes to penetrate the food stuff and do digestion. Now you can see here how it is easily getting moved to the pylorus and the intestine. So because the upper part of the stomach we kept empty. So this is what we should follow in your life that you should not eat food up to the brim, up to the throat. Very, very dangerous it is, okay? Now after burping, if only odor less air or a gas comes out, it indicates that your satiety center in the hypothalamus, okay? It has given the signal that I am satisfied. If it comes with the soreness of the fluid, if the belching comes with the soreness of the fluid, it burning sensation, irritation, it indicates acid regurgitation and maybe warning symptoms. Immediately what you do in case if it happens, just immediately drink cold curd or cold water or even a lassi uh, followed by water so that you can, it's going to neutralize the acidity in the stomach. This water uh, one and remedy for in case if you have like this acid regurgitation with the sore belching. Now, what we do usually mistake while eating, 
say suppose in the breakfast there are five idli or five dosa in front of you and uh, you try to transfer to your plate with a delicious chutney or gravy after idli, uh, eating two idli or two dosa on your plate what we try to transfer another two or possibly all the idlis are dosa due to delicious because they kept five in front of you you transfer initially two because the taste was good delicious so you transferred another three either five idli or five dosa so you had everything now but remember when the taste increases or when you feel delicious we should actually stop eating extra but we don't do that that's why we are adding further disease now if you see the percentage calculation at 30 years if 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 health was 100 percent the organ system of the body loses its function approximately by 3% every year after 30 years. So, next what happens? In next 10 years, 30% is lost. So, in 40 years, at the age of 40 years, you will be having only remaining 70% of it. If you add next 10 more years, again, you lose 30% of the health. That means you will have only 40% of the health. And at the age of 60 years, you will have remaining 10% of the health in case if you survive but all wants 100 percent health throughout the life that's why it is called as healthy aging so the first sentence and the last sentence you want what you want health was 100 percent in 30 years you want in the 60 years also 100 percent only but your body will not allow but still you can able to age healthy what we should do so what is required to get what we want what is required to get what we want? We want 100% health even at the age of 60, isn't it? Now see, you need for that manas. What is manas? It's mind. Mind. So I will ask you, where is mind? So most of you people, I know, I, I think 99.99% people will tell the mind is here in the brain. That's what we think. Is it in brain? No. You may be shocked. If it is not in brain, then where is this mind? It is in heart. Then you may think, what the, uh, the, the, this, uh, this is a surprising thing we are getting, that, that mind is in heart. Heart has four chambers and it is just pumping the blood, isn't it? We'll see. You may ask, what's the proof? What's the proof that mind is in heart, not in brain? See, no proof that air exists, but we can feel it. No proof, what is the reason for heartbeat? Still, we are given a rhythm, idioventricular rhythm, you know, a stainless ligature of the heart experiment. So even when you ligated the last part of the heart, still there was a rhythm in the ventricular. So he gave a name as idioventricular rhythm. We don't know from where the rhythm is coming. That's why they gave us idioventricular rhythm. The cause is not known in the same way. If you tell, show the mind in the heart, you can't show, but it is there. Still, we can give some examples where I can convince you to take to my view and the other's view that the mind is not in the brain, it is in the heart. See, for example, you see Indian version of Manas in heart. You have seen lots of movies and uh, you would have heard lots of songs. See, now what they tell. In Sanskrit, man is not man, it's man. In Sanskrit, it's man refers to both the mind and human being. English we call as man, in Sanskrit we call as man. So it is in my opinion that the English word man has its root in the in Sanskrit, that is man or manu, manusha, manukula. So who has, we have seen above with the progenitor of the human race, the Sanskrit word manush or manava, meaning human being derived from the same word. Man literally refers to thinking, being or being with the mind man is with mind and again i will come back to where is mind mind is not here it is in the heart so if you want to uh, uh, references of movies and songs yes sir so just for the jovial thing i'm going to give you a few, a few examples you i i really I, I feel that you're going to enjoy this you see you uh, heard this song dilwale dulenya le jayenge you heard this it's a movie also you know so but dilwale dil heart Anybody has told you, Dimak wale dolaniya le jayenge. Nobody cares about Dimak in this case. It's Dil. Dil. See, Dil Divana bin Sajanake. Dil Divana bin Sajanake Manena. 
Anybody has told you? Dimak Divana Bin Sajanake Manena. Nobody cares about Dimak. Dil. Dil Man. Manas Mind. Tum Dil Ki Darkhan Me Rehte Ho Rehte Ho. Dil Ki Darkhan Me. Agar Tum Dimak Me Raho Ya Na Raho. Who will ask? They ask, you stay in my heart. Dil. Dil hai ki manta nahi. Anybody told? Dimaag hai ki manta nahi. Nobody cares about Dimaag. If you come to Kanada version of the song, Rude edil ide nidu nadiyon do ide. Anybody told? Pedulin nalli ide nidu. No. Rude ya. Again you come, manas de. No, we always believe in the modern version, isn't it? No, I told the Hindi songs and Kanada songs and all those things. Okay. You may be thinking, what is this uh, This example? Well, no, I'm not going to believe this. So we'll come to English version because we, we always believe in the Westerns, isn't it? We'll see. Whenever you want to buy heart something from the subject, we tell, go and buy heart. Don't, we're not going to tell, go and buy brain the subject, buy heart the subject. For anybody want to wish, we tell, hearty congratulations. Nobody will tell, brainy congratulations. I'll give my heart and soul. Mind is missing here as it is known to be in heart. But nobody will tell, I will give my brain and soul, isn't it? They will tell my heart and soul, not my brain and soul. She is my heart and soul, you know, the most common and famous word. Nobody will tell, she is my brain and soul. I express my feeling from the bottom of my heart, not from the brain. Surgically, even brain dead, heart transplant is possible. For heart dead patient, no brain transplant is possible. So heart works even without body and brain doesn't work without a body. So we know light travels faster than anything, but manas, the mind travels even faster than the light. So you only need one, that is manas, mind, that should come from the heart. Make up your mind and follow healthy lifestyle and also go for healthy age. Now we will come to the main topic. So for the water, till now it was only introduction. Now to pull back to your main topic, Corona. I have not used the word here, virus, bacteria, fungus, or anything. I just use the word Corona. What is this Corona? It's a white or colored circle or set of concentric circle of light seen around a luminous body, especially around the sun, or moon. That's why it is called corona. Now, if you see here, on the left side, luminous body, especially around the sun or moon, is called corona. And what recently we identified the infectious agent, which is shutting the whole world, we are given the name corona. Because both look similar, we gave the name as corona, right? Now, this is how this organism, the infectious agent, looks under microscope. See the difference? Almost it looks similar, isn't it? This so, so left side you can see in the black and white, and right side you can see in the color. This so it looks under the microscope, corona. Now, corona and Ayurveda. So many people have asked me that. Has it been mentioned in Ayurveda? Recently it was identified only in 2019, in November. That's why we gave the name as COVID-19. But any exogenous disease also has been mentioned in Ayurveda. So we have a reference called Firanga Roga. What is this Firanga Roga? Firanga means foreigner. Firanga desha means foreign country. And Firanga roga is considered analogous with the syphilis. In Ayurveda is mentioned the syphilis. So this disease is believed to have high incidence among Firangi foreigners and spread to others through their contact, especially sexual contact as per well Ayurveda. So they, they give the reference of Firanga roga. Hence it is named as Firanga. So any disease, if we acquire from foreign countries, can be considered Firanga Roga. Remember this, may not be always syphilis. Any disease, including this corona, it is a, because we never give a birth this corona in, the, in our country, isn't it? It's an imported disease. It's an imported disease. So it is it's also can be considered Firanga Roga. So Firanga is an agantuja, exogenous disease. It gets transferred by physical contact, that's what they told in Ayurveda, but here it can be by droplet infection also, and by other modes of transmission, it is entering to the respiratory tract. So if you see, as per the Ministry of Ayush, that is Ayurveda immunity boosting measures for self-care during this pandemic, 
and still i am not coming to the corona what it is remember this i didn't told you it is virus or bacteria or fungi whatever it may be come back to it later so we'll see what minister of ayush uh, government of uh, india has given ayurveda being the science of life propagates the uh, gifts of nature in maintaining healthy and happy living ayurveda extensive knowledge based on preventive care derives from the concept of dinacharya i think some uh, in the previous session some uh, speakers might have spoke about this dinacharya ratricharya and gutucharya where we have to maintain some set of principles and uh, you know some rules and regulations in daily regimens night regimens and also as per the seasonal we have to maintain the healthy life so if you see the classical scriptures the simplicity of the awareness about oneself and the harmony each individual can achieve by uplifting and maintaining his uh, our immunity his emphasis are across immunity remember immunity now also we have, all the people are talking about immuno boosters immunity so based on this the minister of health has given in this condition what you can start is the first formula what they will take chavan prash 10 gram 1 teaspoon in the morning so diabetic should uh, can take chavan prash sugar free are available in the market you can go and buy that and take second uh, formula is drink herbal tea or decoction is also called khada made out of tulsi dalchini cinnamon or black pepper kali mirch shunti munaka once or twice a day add jaggery or fresh lemon juice to get taste because lemon juice contains vitamin c vitamin c is very important for immune system and in case of diabetes you should uh, have all this formulation except you should not use the sweetening agent here and you can also use a milk called as golden milk what is golden milk half teaspoon of turmeric powder in 150 ml of uh, hot milk you can take once or twice daily and there are some procedure the simple uh, ayurvedic procedures nasal application apply sesame oil or coconut oil or ghee in both the nostril okay this also called pratimarsh nasya in the morning or evening you can do that okay you need some supervisor uh, uh, for do, doing this don't immediately start this you should consult some physician to do this but this is a very important uh, regimen for preventing this kind of infection agent entering in in our respiratory tract oil cooling therapy is uh, one tablespoon of sesame or coconut oil can be kept in the mouth do not drink it just fish them out this is just like a gargling for 2 to 3 minutes and spit it out followed by warm water and after what you can do a uh, one or half spoon of coconut oil you can just keep it in the mouth swallow it followed by drinking of warm water can be done it's a very very uh, good method where your lingual life is will going to digest this coconut oil and coconut oil is the best medicine for any of the diseases really it's a very uh, i can tell it's like a holy thing okay so during dry cough or sore throat steam inhalation with fresh pudina leaves or ajwan caraway seeds can be practiced once in a day and lavang powder or clove mixed with natural sugar or honey right except in the diabetes uh, no sugar or honey is allowed can be taken two to three times a day in each case of uh, cough or throat irritation so uh, these uh, measures generally treat normal dry cough and sore throat however it is best to consult doctor if these symptoms persist because we don't know it may be because of a tuberculosis or some other chronic condition also so you can start with this if it doesn't subsist you can go and consult your doctor so there are lots of foods fruits and vegetables that can naturally enhance your immune system remember this you have everything at home don't go search in medical stores you have everything at home one of the easiest way to improve your immunity is to have healthy and wholesome diet very right? well starting like i told you about the signal light remember this there is a healthy and wholesome diet so what you should do's and don'ts so that you have to go through that the fruits and vegetables that are rich in beta carotene vitamin a e zinc are very good for immune immune the immunity uh, boosting and uh, this includes broccoli cauliflower kali kiwi oranges so many i have given you a list here then uh, sweet potato uh, diabetes should not use potato remember this others can use strawberries tomato avocados peanuts so many things are there you can go for this fruits and vegetables all kinds of berries along with fruits rich in omega 3 fatty acids such as beans flax seeds and even some nuts can be used all these are given the formulas is given by the minister of health and ayush remember this so based on the classical text references and some of the immune boosting herbs of garlic black cumin and also licorice can be used the above measures can be followed to the extent of possible as per individual convenience and these measures are recommended by following eminent vaidyas from across the countries so many uh, formulas has been given to the minister of health and ayush so they have given this formula to to prevent uh, the, the spreading of this pandemic so now mistakes of higher authorities of the world i am telling you mistakes of the higher authorities of the world about this pandemic and possible measures see what they made they made the people panic with the word like lockdown sealed down quarantine etc instead 
they would have educated and created awareness in the people because of this panic only it has spread even more faster than before they would have given awareness second thing there was no clarity in the number of quarantine days sometimes there should be 14 days sometimes 7 days sometimes 3 days now no quarantine if they do like that it's very difficult to follow because people are in panicking they are in confusion instead they were given some standard fixed days for quarantine that is one of the mistake what the authors of the whole world has done so now we'll come to what is this covid 19 now corona virus disease 19 because it was identified in 2019 november that's why we call it as covid 19 or corona virus disease 19 now confusion is it really a virus or a bacteria or a fungus or something else so many people are used to uh, tell me some people people are telling it's a bacteria some are telling it's virus some are telling it's fungus so what is this is it virus the bacteria or fungus or something else any answer anybody you are thinking whole world from past to virus virus yes. so 99 people uh, percent of the people will tell it is virus some are still thinking you know it may be bacteria fungus isn't it we will see what is this the corona virus or covid 19 is not a virus not a bacteria not a fungus it is a lesson for the humanity where human beings were roaming with the egoistic nature that nobody can beat them in this world in any field but an invisible enemy a single exogenous agent can make his dream and whole world upside down because of negligence and carelessness remember this corona virus is not a virus or anything it is a lesson for the humanity you take 100 years to build a country but an invisible enemy a single exogenous agent can shatter the whole world in just 6 months as shown the world it can shatter in just 6 months because of negligence carelessness and very important human being have a very much ego so don't say i want happiness remove i you will get rid of ego remove want you will get rid of desire what remains is only happiness so finally maintain social distancing wear a mask sanitize hands frequently stay home stay safe thank you yes thank for the organizers thank you sir thank you very informative and uh, uh, you know thought provoking and uh, interesting to be more interesting where you kept the people uh, what's next coming next you yeah, talk yeah. less about covid but you give more information about how to take care of from, from covid so yeah. that's very important sir to keep an interest of people uh, there and i have heard uh, you many times uh, we always uh, get impressed by your uh, presentations and all and we are glad that you have joined us for in this webinar series and i'm very glad of you and yeah. i just want people to ask sir because i know sir is there with so many answers yeah, i've yeah. been associated please, please. with anybody who wants to ask me questions sir they can ask me yeah i can so share my can... thoughts my experience yeah Sir, sir, hi. Yeah, yeah. Hello. Uh, sir, actually, you said that uh, it is not a virus, bacteria. What is this exactly? Whether it is a bacteria or virus? No. If if they are developing developing a vaccine, it should be a virus only. But uh, I'm I, I'm going to release. Don't worry whether it is virus or bacteria. Or it is a lesson. Lesson no, for the whole humanity. No, no, no. That is correct, sir. No, just yeah. a. whether it's yeah. a bacteria or still i mean it is it is a virus it is a virus okay. it is a virus see that's why i want to give a simple example yeah if it is a bacteria or if any other agent it will be not spread so fast because it is a virus okay because it is a virus it has that yes. much of contagious uh, uh, you know the factor that's why it spreads so fast so it is a virus and uh, they are going to develop a, a vaccine in future so that's what we hope for we'll see how uh, the you know the route takes place okay sir okay thank you right. any other questions so we have one more question yeah is the treatment of covid 19 possible by ayurveda Like as Patanjali is claiming success of COVID treatment by Ayurveda, so is it possible? See, see, I'll tell you. There are lots of uh, formulas available in Ayurveda. 
lots of formulas are available. The only thing is what we need is a proper research. When somebody wants to test their formulations to cure a disease, the government should support those uh, researchers to come forward and conduct research smoothly by providing fund. Unless we do research and show it with the evidence, none of the treatment is going to uh, start it because, because you have to give some treatment which you should have a statistically significant results. Unless you have that, you can't prove that there is a treatment. So there are two types of uh, approach to this coronavirus. One is prevention by vaccine. Second is treatment for those already suffering from the disease. So for the prevention at, uh, part, the vaccine uh, creation is going on in some other parts of the world, including India. For treatment, it is a different scenario. So we need to do lots of research. There are so many formulations in Ayurveda and so many um, eminent personalities in Ayurveda who have a very good formulations. But to bring that and to test on the patients, the government should support. If you just treat some five to 10 patients and tell them my uh, treatment is successful, you can't claim like that because each and every person's body behaves differently to different drugs and different formulations. So to pull back to one certain level and tell that my drug is effective in 100 patients or 1,000 patients, we need to do research and prove that. Unless we do that, I can't tell just only one formulation is going to uh, give a treatment for the coronavirus disease. Still, they are working on how this uh, uh, disease came into existence. We Still, they don't know what's the source of the disease. Whether it is a chimerically made in the lab or it has been came from the bat to human beings or some other creature, we don't know. Because, you know, you know, those people, what and all, they ate, they only don't know. The live animal they ate and from there the virus has gems, this is called species gem. That also we don't have any evidence for that. Now if you ask them from where you got the virus, they tell that, no, no, somewhere the, uh, the virus would have been origin and we have first identified that. That also they are going to claim like that. So it's very difficult uh, to at this time to tell there's a treatment. So we need a research for that. Then only we can able to tell there's a treatment for this. Okay? Yes. Okay, sir. If anyone has any queries, do raise your questions. Sir, as you said, uh, hello, sir. Yeah. Sir, as you said, kashaya and all. Yeah. Uh, you said two day, two times a day. I think uh, that works on inhalations. So inhalations. Yeah. Uh, uh, any other eucalyptus oil can be used uh, for, along with the. Uh, this thing, uh, mint, along with uh, eucalyptus oil. Yeah, yeah, good. yeah. Right. So, and even kapur uh, means like uh, uh, dupam. Dupam is yeah. also, I think, uh, uh, it's uh, it will work out because dupam is also when you do incense. Uh, See, with... One thing, one thing, people should identify that why why uh, we get a uh, we get fever uh, in case of this infection. Why we get fever? Because this body's uh, uh, ability to make the body temperature to rise in order to kill the organism. It is a protective mechanism. The fever, what we get is a protective mechanism. When it couldn't able to do that, then the body is going to accept the failure. So that's what it happens. So these are the you know, very good preventive measures to uh, get rid of this uh, infectious agent. Yes. Any other questions? The poll is there. Please do uh, participate in your poll. Uh, we have kept a poll about the session. Please do participate. Feedback form will be provided soon. Sir, sir, there is one question. Yes, any other question? Uh, anybody else? Uh, yes.
I just want to ask about these masks, sir. They are telling about mask. Yeah. But uh, when we uh, sneeze or something, when we cough, but that remains within this thing. And yeah. if you wear the mask for uh, more than uh, two hours or three hours, it is that we are still getting spreading the infection in our uh, in and around our uh, oral cavity. Uh, this thing, I think so. That's, that's why. That's why what we usually we suggest is once you get like the sneeze and if you sneeze with inside the mask, better to change the mask, discard that. Yeah. Don't reuse it. That's only that thing we can do. That has to be educated to people because we do what? Yeah, yeah, that's right. Yeah. The that's proper right. education is very important because we try to sneeze it within the mask and uh, then what happens? We put it back uh, because we that's are not right. spreading to others. But I think that is more riskier than. Uh, that's why whenever you get exposed to like this, what you should do is just discard the mask and use the discard safely and use a different mask. That's the only thing we can do because we can't reuse it. Yeah. That's the thing. Any other questions? So some people have asked a question. Yeah. Uh, the first question is: Has anyone treated coronavirus with strictly just natural remedies? If so, what were the results and what remedies were used? See, uh, already so much of remedies we have just given in my slides. The only thing is, it depends on the person's immune system also. If your immune system is good, fifty to sixty percent it is going to take care. Your treatment, what you are going to see with this kashayam and other things and all, is going to work out only 40%. And definitely, the patient is going to recover because the fact in this world is all the paper patients who have got infected with corona have not died. There are many have recovered even without treatment. Yes or no? Yes or no? Yes, sir. Yes. Many patients have recovered even without treatment. There are uh, patients with asymptomatic. They have not suffered, but when you test, they have found positive. That means they have a very good immune system that can take care of the virus. This has been already told in Ayurveda Palace, Swabhavo Param Vada. That means your body has natural immune system to combat this virus. In case if you have some immunocompromised status or if you have some other comorbidities, then only it's going to you know uh, fail you. So as I told you, you if you have a very good immune system what i give the formulas there to have a healthy food and healthy diet and exercise and if you keep your mental the mind mind means we're not here here heart now i think for most of the people who are seeing this i change the concept of mind is not they learn please don't mind or never mind but now mind is in heart not in the brain so keep that in the mind in the heart that if you have a very good immune system, you can definitely able to combat this because not all the people who have got infected with corona have died. Actually, in India, the recovery rate is more than the other parts of the world. Yes or no? That's the thing. Yes. Any other? Uh, sir, can you enlighten more on formulation of Dr. Giridhar Taji? Yeah. Just now, we, I gave so much of these uh, decoctions uh, and all. I gave the formulations. So as I told, if uh, this formulation, what I give in the presentation, if 100% uh, uses these formulations of made of kashay of all those things with uh, garlic, uh, pepper, and you know ginger and all uh, in different uh, fermentation combinations, we're going to use that. If 100% uses that, for 70% of the patient, it's going to work out, provided they have a very good immune system. Remember that, okay? 30% because of the comorbidities or any other factors, it is not going to work out, whatever may be there, because you know most of the patients, even giving the best ventilator facility also, they have not been revived, right? So in that case, if, in that, if they fall to 30% of the case with the comorbidities or immunocompromised status, no Ayurveda, no allopathy or any other system of medicine is going to help. So what I'm going to tell you is, first, see the slide and see all these things you should follow. Social distancing, mask frequently, uh, hand sanitizing in common state, unless it's very necessary, go out. And second thing is, maintain a very good immune system. Immune system maintenance, it is only because of three things. I'll tell you, remember these three things. You should have a very good and proper food, the balanced food. Second is you should have a very good and safety water. And third is very, very important, air, the fresh air. But, you know, you should thank this coronavirus also. You know why? Because most of the people who are going outside, they are wearing masks, isn't it? Yes. So when they are wearing masks, not only they are getting uh, protected from corona, they are getting protected from pollution also. So, so many, nowadays we are seeing less asthma people inside the uh, respiratory disease ward. 
because asthma is not getting exaggerated because they are not getting exposed to allergen. So we should thank coronavirus in this case. Previously, we used to see the wearing mask only by police person inside you know, in the traffic police. You have seen traffic police used to wear mask. Yeah. Nowadays, everybody is wearing mask. So that means pollution uh, for the body is uh, you know is getting implemented. So it's very good actually. Only thing is it has shattered our life and we should be very careful about this virus. That's all. Understood. Yeah. Uh, Bilsita, I just want you to go to a YouTube chat box. Uh, there are some questions over there. Okay. okay. So next question. How does adding turmeric to our diet boost our immunity? See, the turmeric, this importance of turmeric has been uh, extensively studied. Extensively studied. So this is going to improve the Gut immunity. The turmeric is going to. If it is said that if your intestine is very good, your whole body is good because intestine acts as a root for the body. Remember that intestine acts for the root uh, for the body, just like you have root for the tree. So this uh, turmeric is going to enhance the the activity of the normal bacteria gut flora. This gut flora is going to prevent the exogenous pathogen. So it is going to maintain the GAT immunity or gut immunity. When the gut immunity is strong, nothing can penetrate the intestinal wall and go inside. So that's why this turmeric is having a very good immunoboosting capacity. So it is indirectly boosting the immune, immune system, not directly. You are not getting directly getting vitamin A, vitamin D and all. It is going to boost the, the gut immunity. That's how it's going to work out in this case. Understood? Yes? Yes, sir. Can you tell about something about ashwagandha and other guluchi and all? Yeah, th these are all, uh, uh, you know, they have actually, whenever you take less crude drug, it, it is not having one single active principle. But when they were added with some other drugs, it becomes a formulation. So that formulation, if, if I'm going to tell about the concept of Ayurveda, it's very difficult to understand because we have a, uh, uh, so much of uh, concepts in Ayurveda where we have to talk about his guna, lakshana, rasa, virya, vipaka, so many things are there. And we always uh, give the medicine in terms of the body constitution like vata, pitta, kapha. I think mo most of you have heard this. And also based on the the, their uh, constitution of the body is called sattva, rajas, and manas, uh, uh, tamas. This is the concept. So based on when a patient comes to us, we see what kind of uh, uh, the prakriti he belongs, the constitution, whether there is a vata prakriti, pitta prakriti, kapha prakriti, or it's a combination of these things. Based on this, we give different formulations. So don't think everybody who takes ashwagandha or gudichi or they are going to get... Uh, uh, in the same way, even in case of allopathy also, if we give uh, paracetamol to 10 patients, uh, only for six patients, the fever will come down. For other four patients, will not come down. That is called a fever of unknown origin. It will never come down. In the same way, this Ayurveda also. People have uh, lots of uh, misconception. Ayurveda will never cause adverse effects. No, no, it also causes adverse effects. Remember that. Maybe herbal, but still it causes. So we always use the patient individualizing, not as a whole, common. It's not going to work out. So... We have to see the constitution of the patient, diagnose it properly, then only with the herbal medicine also. That's going to give success for the treatment. And also we have a uh, other kind of uh, uh, you know, education called Snadi Vidyana. Some people are going to just see the pulse and tell, feel the pulse and tell whether the patients have kidney stones or not without having a uh, CT scan or MRI. There are some uh, Vaidyas in Kerala and other uh, classical uh, people. They just feel the pulse and tell what uh, kind of... Uh, uh, ailment you have because of their experience. So, whenever we give the herbal drugs, we have to see the constitution of the patient and they have to give the medicine. Truly, rightly said, sir, because nowadays I have seen that they tell to take a lot of vitamin D and now they are telling that there is a lot of toxicity because of vitamin D, excess of consumption of vitamin D. Basically, in diabetic see, patients. Uh, so, so many people are seeing it, uh, advertisement in the television. You you breathe easy. Pankaja goes through. Breathe easy. Ayur slim. Ayur can and all. Remember that whatever they show in the TV or television, a doctor will not prescribe. What doctor will prescribe, they will not show in the television. Remember that. Because doctors are not writing, they are giving from the advertisement. If I read the same thing like Ayur slim or Pankaja goes through, breathe easy if I in my clinic, people will go, I'm seeing this in TV and why you are writing this? They'll ask. So because they are not writing, so they are showing the television. So remember that. So all those are advertisement gimmicks. So please don't. And even that is expensive also. 300, 400 rupees per one bottle. So it's not going to work out. Yes. Any other question? So last question. 
Yes. Has the effect of coronavirus has come down due to mutation? See, there are two types of mutations. Uh, it may be beneficial or harmful. Beneficial means if the virulence factor has come down, then it is good for us. If it doesn't, then it is bad for us. If it is mutating adversely. As of now, still it is unclear that a mutation has occurred and its virulence factor has been come down. But it depends on, as we told, it depends on dif different ethnicity and races. In different countries, it's behaving, behaving differently. Once we get the number of cases and number of deaths steadily coming down, then we come to know that the human beings are getting immune to that. They are getting resistant to that. So we should see the curve, how it goes. But we should be always very cautious about this infectious agent. How safe you are depends on how strict and with principle you are in your life. I told now as the, the, the famous sentence I told, this is not a virus, not a fungus, not a bacteria, nothing. It is just a lesson for everybody. You know, I will tell you one small uh, uh, example. You are just traveling very fast on a motorcycle or on a bike. Remember that. Going very fast. The world was moving very fast. And suddenly if you put a brake, what happens? The behind will come front. Yes or no? If you put sudden response, inertia. So we were going. Actually, I was thinking in 21st century, people will try to build a, a house in moon or Mars. But the virus has put the break in such a way that now we are learning how to wash hands, how to close face, how to maintain distance. We came back to ABCD. And we went 100 years back. Again, we should start. People are taking half salary. Some people have lost the job. Some people have mental tension. And uh, the females are buying lipstick, but they can't show because they have to wear mask. And previously, when you were to celebrate, you used to just put a high five, but you can't now touch. And so many, uh, so many people who are in love and up, they can't meet each other. They can't see friends. And uh, students have lost their education. Already in, in, in education, you know what our system was. And because of the virus, everybody is sitting. Previously, we should tell for our children, don't touch the mobile. Now you are telling, please touch the mobile. Only in class, Baba. Please sit in front of the monitor. Just six months back, how you used to score? Don't be on the mobile always. It's going to, uh, it's as a magnetic radiation. It's going to degenerate your brain. Uh, that this is sound. Now we are telling, we are buying new mobile. So which company improved? Mobile company improved. SIM company, sanitizer company, and uh, this mask company and all improved. Which company shattered? Papa, this barber, they are not getting customers. Nobody is going there. The Panipuri vendors, Papa, they shut down. All these people used to depend on daily life. They're shattered like anything. And people are making money. In other in, 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 uh, in the name of Corona, they're making money. Then what can I tell? <laughs> Here also, we're not learning a lesson. Huh? We are making uh, money out of bodies also. Unless you pay seven lakhs, we're not going to go you give body. That's what hospital is. So we should tell, keep the body free. You only do last rituals. We do one. We are not going to pay seven. Where will get seven lakhs immediately? It's not so easy. It's not so easy. Really an informative session, sir. To, be, <laughs> to make people realize what exact the situation is. That's very good. Yeah. See, yeah. The thing is, I'm telling you, as I told, because we did the initial carelessness and negligence, we are in this situation now. I'm telling for the higher authorities who are sitting on Okay, I can accept I'm a normal person and you people are also a normal person. What about higher authorities? Why they are called as intelligence? Why they couldn't predict this? When we know that and, and this is going to hit us, we should put a shield. We should put a shield. We didn't do. Okay, I'm going to accept that okay, it has spread to whole India. At least we could have provided, protected our states. Individual states would have protected by strict measures. We didn't do that. We don't have strategy. We don't have intelligence inputs. We don't know how to go. At least we can't be able to uh, and, and, and prevent a single virus and infection agent. What are we going to achieve? Why we have so much of uh, 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 costly or expensive 
instruments in the hospitals 60 lakh 60 crores and all what's the use of that now we couldn't able to just prevent one virus attack a small virus attack when we came to basics wear mask wash hand everything whatever we bring from outside we are just washing it you need you know that it has caused a scare scaredness in our life so we'll see we'll see how uh, still the where this going to end we don't know we'll see how we are at i i i feel that the, the virus is observing human being uh, how they are going to handle this case and one day the virus will resign it will go to quarantine i think so i can't deal with these human beings i will go for quarantine let them go ro- roam so i think the virus will resign from this world because of this attitude of the people that's what i feel he is going to be fed up hello sir good evening yeah yeah hello sir good evening thank you sir for this uh, very informative session Yeah, uh, yeah. So I would like to ask about the food which we are having. Uh, yes. Is vegetarian food good for health or veg- non-vegetarian good for health? Ah, it's a very very nice question. I'll tell you one thing. Our intestine handles the vegetarian food better than non-vegetarian. I'll tell you why. See the. stress it takes to digest the non veg is more the gut takes more stress to digest the non veg than the veg and if you see the previous research you just go and type in the google that incidence and prevalence of colon cancer and non vegetarian food you just put it in the google and see you get lots of paper but you just put colon cancer with vegetable food hardly you find one also hardly you find we have a clear cut evidence that non vegetarian food will cause stress for the intestine and that is the prime reason for colon cancer even now after the session go and just search colon cancer plus non vegetarian food you get lots of paper thousands of paper you will get but you will not get with the vegetarian food that shows that our intestine is designed to digest simple and easy foods not a hard foods you know that way the and you know what is the uh, beauty here the intestine muscle or smooth muscle yes or no yes ha huh. when you eat this chicken or this uh, mutton and all your leg and all is it smooth muscle skeletal muscle is it smooth muscle skeletal muscle skeletal muscle Ah, so smooth muscle is digesting skeletal muscle. Usually, what is stronger, smooth muscle or skeletal muscle? Skeletal muscle. Ah, so smooth muscle is digesting skeletal muscle means how much strain it can take. Understood the concept? Yes, yes. Sir. You understood the concept? Yes. Ah, that is the yes, thing. Sir. A skeletal muscle can digest least, uh, uh, you know, uh, easily digest the smooth muscle, but smooth muscle digesting skeletal muscle, how much strain it takes? That's why that's the reason for carcinoma or cancer. can't take the strain i will if i tell you to jog a whole day can you do that no you will get fatigue same thing happens here you can't handle that much whole life you are eating non vegan it is digesting digesting it is doing its because it don't want you to die so anyhow it is doing the digestion but last it will fail when it fail you go for scanning and they will tell you have a cancer gone case that's all simple so so uh, so so related to this pandemic uh, session so what uh, which food you would prefer more the veg or the non veg one i am telling you during this pandemic i am telling you i will tell you you have a lots of varieties in veg and non veg remember that sure sir you have lots of varieties in veg than non veg and what you can't get from uh, that you can get everything vegetarian from vegetables you have green leaf vegetables fruits all these you get from non veg i'll tell you a simple thing i'm not 100% against non veg remember that but still i'm going to tell you you are eating a body of animal that's all yes you are not going to eat live isn't it like chinese <laughs> till you bring to the home and cook uh, it has some time is there so time gap means you bought a dead body to home and you are eating body but not human being of animals that's all animals and birds finish so eating dead body is good or bad 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 ah. 
finish so i am going not going to tell and one more thing i'll tell you remember don't think that you only have feelings animals also have feeling yes. suppose this hen or sheep or goat is having headache it not till i have headache but when you cut it and bring home you are eating its pain also if it has stomach pain it will not tell you you i have um, a verbal uh, capability you are going to tell i have stomach pain that they will not they will be suffering or they may have some mental disease also who knows who is diagnosing that they may be having depression because you put them in the, some cage uh, they will be having always inside the cage this hen and other things so there will be depression so you are going to cut that and eat so you are e- eating a depressed body depressed uh, uh, animal finished thank you sir for this uh, explanation <laughs> we feel only we have feelings they don't have feelings about they have that's why we have animal ethical committee we have lots of people will come there and ask some questions why you are going to kill rat why you are going to sacrifice that animal why? because they are concerned with the ethical issue they also have feeling the only thing is they can't express the feeling so because of that we are taking advantage and killing the animal they have feelings they have pain we are eating their pain we are eating their depression we are eating their disease actually we are eating their disease and dead body that's all only because it tastes good we are like that and once it moves out of this tongue to the throat no taste nothing you add it for the disease finish yes any other question i can no, there are a lot of smiles in people's face yes yeah. sir i have to leave this non vegetarian food the <laughs> i think most of the time <laughs> now you you think over i gave the concept to you yeah. you gave think over yeah. now now the thing is yeah. uh, it's a very very nice conversation yeah. whether to live non veg or not right non veg tastes good right yes and those who already tasted that uh, they will be very fancy about this uh, non veg and uh, you know uh, it's just like a, what we can a craving 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 so i'm i'm going to tell you if you want to stop this non vegetarian if you first think you make up your mind that you are going to stop mind i told is not here in the heart you make from the heart make up that i'm going to if you are going to stop don't stop from today whatever you are taking regularly 10% 15% slowly you should reduce it by taking next two months you can definitely able to stop that and slowly transform your lifestyle to vegetarian and i i'm tell you what you except for the taste all of the thing you get in vegetarian and nowadays even the vegetarian food can be prepared like non vegetarian only and you can still have the taste from the non vegetarian only like you know your uh, like uh, gobi manchuri they will have and they have so many other things they people like uh, non vegetarian but it's vegetarian they has a mushroom manchurian they will have understood so you have lots of variety in vegetarians you can slowly transform you just think over because i told you just because just because i told stop non vegetarian you go and search in google now whether colon cancer is related to non vegetarian or not just going to see and i don't think i'm not just telling that those who are eating non veg now definitely they will get uh, colon cancer immediately but there also it depends on chance factor yeah yeah whatever you said it is true sir even uh, this uh, ananda gurus uh, i have attended three days class there also they are okay. saying same thing they have depression they have feelings uh, you can leave that same thing they are saying that's what i mean yeah you can leave that i think we were suppose, uh, we all were there yeah oh, no suppose i, I, I am going to tell you now uh, that's why i'm telling you suppose i i can't i can't speak now somebody got, uh, come and tries to eat me how i feel if i am no we are also animals in future some other uh, big creature comes sir, and if they start eating us we, how we feel correct correct sir exactly animal feels only the thing is they can't tell they can't express remember that they came to they, they, actually i will tell you the, the worst animal in the world is human being yes or no true yes, sir 100% we wait we wait for revenge we wait for uh, you know uh, uh, other bad to think but animals will attack only if they are in danger otherwise simply they will not come and at oh pramod is there i am going to bite oh dr janeshakar is i am going to no no animals will plan like this only human being will plan and kill or plan and attack the animals will not do that only for their stomach for their hungry they do that otherwise they never have like this uh, property revenge or something else no 
right? Now, one right. more thing I would like to add as an Ayurvedic doctor yeah. that uh, yeah. we say that ahar hits aushad, like what yeah. we eat, yeah. that is the medicine as well as what we eat. It yes, uh, right. affects our feelings, our thinking, thoughts, behavior, everything. So vegetarian yeah. food is a sattvic ahar, that is fruits and uh, milk and vegetables and all, as well as non-veg food is called as tamasic ahar. That's and right, it even right, right. uh, uh, give rises to hatred and uh, anger and depression. Hundred percent, hundred percent, hundred percent. See that uh, killing of animal itself is a cruelty. Now, where you will uh, accept, uh, expect uh, uh, a softness in the nature? You can't expect when you know you are killing an animal from and you, that is itself is a cruelty. Then what you can expect softness in, from the person? So inside, you know that anger will be there. That you know the, the bad things will start. That is itself is a cruelty. I'm not in that in Ayurveda, the non-vegetarian food is not told. It's told. It is told. But only on some circumstances. Some circumstances it has been told as a part of treatment is told. But not as a diet uh, lifestyle. Not like that. So that's what uh, I want to throw the light on this. Any other questions? Thank you, sir. Anybody else? I'll be. There is a short video that we'll be playing right now. Danya? And it was one of the most, uh, uh, I think we had a, a big question answer session, which was, a, this was the first session where we had such a uh, huge uh, discussion. And so it was an open, uh, free discussion. That was good. Because, because I have to reach the people to their their uh, level. If I meet them, no, they can able to easily share the feelings. If I just talk something about a PhD level, who will understand? They'll tell when he's going to finish this, uh, uh, this uh, session. I don't want to do like that. I want them to think and share their thoughts with the utmost simplicity. And uh, you know how uh, I, I have done other seminars in your college when I came there. So I want them to involve and that was the after lunch. After yeah, lunch. Yeah, yeah. After lunch. <laughs> yes, sir. I still remember. Yeah, yeah. 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 You know, thank Everybody you for this woke opportunity. Up after, your, uh, after your lecture. <laughs> Thanks for this opportunity. So we'll. Uh... And we are glad that you uh, accepted our invitation uh, to be a part of Aloka uh, Foundation's uh, initiative. That's our main initiative is to uh, health awareness and health education. That's our basic because we are pharmacy graduate students and I'm glad about my students. I, I name few, Vilsita, Prerna, I think she's in touch with you, Disha. Yeah, uh, right. And they're doing wonderful jobs, sir. And uh, I am proud of them that at this age when they have been given an opportunity and they're taking that opportunity to the best of their abilities. And I am happy for them. And uh, I'll tell everybody, these are all my students who are arranging me all these things. Thank you, thank you. So get the feedbacks and uh, let me know. Yeah, and, and I think the feedbacks and we try to see, show that this in YouTube live, it is there. We we'll try to promote this in YouTube so that people hear you. Yeah, thank you. Thank that's you. our main thing. People hear you because that's very important. Because ideas thank have to be seen. I don't know. Many of them are that live on YouTube also. Some people. Okay. So uh, there were some questions over that also. I was just monitoring that also. So... Okay. Main thing is to reach people, to educate people. That's our motto in uh, Aloka Foundation. If and any I think other, uh, given as, uh, any yes. other query, if they have, let them send to my mail. I can answer them. Surely, sir. Uh, we will uh, we'll try to see that uh, about this. Okay. Anything right, this, right. Uh, and we can have some few more sessions or open sessions about uh, this thing. We'll see. Yeah. Right, right. Yeah. Danya, can you just uh, put on the video or we'll sit down? Uh, uh, sir, kindly sir. Huh? Uh, stop the screen sharing. Sir, can you stop the screen sharing? Yeah, I stopped. Yeah. Yes, we'll sit. You can proceed. Thank we'll sit. So Thank you so much, sir, for your insightful presentation and providing us a unique perspective. So I request all the participants to to fill the feedback link put up in the chat box to avail your certificates. So now we have successfully completed our fourth national webinar. We will be coming up with more events soon.
our foundation will work towards converting this world into a better place to live for every deprived soul and taking them on a journey of not so happy to ever smiling is what we thrive now we would like to present a sm small video on what aloka foundation is all about and what are all the activities we have been conducted so far So these were some of the events uh, we have conducted. We are planning some more events. Uh, tomorrow we'll be having an event on uh, webinar on uh, social uh, mental health. Uh, so tomorrow is this effect of pandemic on social behavior and mental health. So Mr. Uh, Job, Pastor Job uh, John, he will be presenting uh, on uh, the effect of pandemic on social uh, behavior. And, and I request all of you to be a part of this. So you can, uh, is a uh, good uh, counselor. So I request all of you to be a part of this webinar tomorrow at around four o'clock. Thank you, Danya. Thank you, sir. Yeah, thank you very thank much. You, sir. Thank you very much for your wonderful session, sir. I think most of them, those who have attended, I think they've gained. Yeah, they gained some. You. That's very much important. So the number does not count, but whosoever is there should go take back some whenever they go. So and I there think you have given them a good message when they go back. Thank you, sir. And uh, I, with this, uh, I'd like to end the session. Uh, thank you, everybody, for your presence. Uh, stay safe. Stay home. Stay safe. Don't venture out if it is necessary. Then only go out. Be safe. Good day. Thank you all. Yeah, yeah. Okay. Gratitude is the fairest blossom which springs from the soul. It unlocks the fullness of life. Now I call upon Miss Prerna Chi to deliver vote of thanks. Thank you, Elsita. Good evening, one and all. Gratitude unlocks the fullness of life. It turns denial into acceptance, chaos into order, confusion to charity. It can turn a meal into a feast, a house into home, a stranger into a friend. It brings peace for today and creates a vision for tomorrow. I'm here to render gratitude to all who have helped to make today's webinar a grand success. First of all, I would like to thank our guest speaker, Dr. Chandrasekhar R. Sir, who is Treasury of Knowledge. Thank you, sir, for enlightening us by your knowledge. The inspiration behind this program is our Pramod Bhaskar Kumar, sir, who is also the leader of Aloka Foundation. Thank you, sir, for your wonderful thought and action. I'm also thankful to our secretary, Dr. Manohar Nai K, sir, and also our treasurer, Dr. Kantini Pramod Kumar, Madam, 
for their guidance and support. Teamwork makes everything successful is the belief. It is proved in the case of Aloka Foundation. So far, all our activities are a grand success because of an active team. So, my heartfelt thanks to all the members of the team. And of course, I cannot forget the audience. Because without audience, our program is worthless. So, my sincere thanks to all the audience for listening to the talk. Once again, I thank each and everyone. Thank you, one and all. Thank you, Prerna. Thank you all for attending. I hope all of them will join us tomorrow for our another uh, uh, webinar. Thank you all. And with this, I will end the session. Thank you. Thank you, sir. Thank you. Thank you, sir. Thank you, Disha. Thank you, Prerna. Thank you, Vilsita. Thank you, Danya.